What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome to the 27th episode of Tuffy Talk. Again, but today we got part two of uh, of the extender descent for the ACC basketball coaches uh, with Dan Siegel from ACC Content. If you haven't seen part one, please click up here at the top to go back and watch part one and make sure to go do that and then uh, come back and check us out for part two. Uh, so with that being said, again, please, uh, if, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, to uh, follow us uh, and and uh, also to make sure to like this video uh, if you enjoy it check out other content and uh, follow us at Tuffy Talk now bang on Twitter and Instagram and uh, also too uh, wanted to, before we get going want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor Flatlands Jep- Jessup Insurance Group that has your whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need offering policies for home and auto recreational vehicles commercial crop health life and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jesso protects the things you love so you can spend less time worrying and more time enjoying them. Uh, find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. So with that being said, let's go and get started with part two. So uh, moving on now to uh, Notre Dame with Mike Bray. So, uh, so Dan, hand it to you, man. I'm going to say descend for Mike Bray. He's had a lot of success. He's basically an icon at that program, kind of an under-the-radar icon as far as the ACC is concerned because when we're listing the icon, you know, you're going to say Bayheim, Coach K, Roy Williams. You might even throw – like a Tony Bennett in there at this point, but Mm -hmm. Mike Bray is actually going to be the longest tenured coach in the ACC for their current team. So that, so that, that goes to the point that he's an icon, but I think he might be kind of, I don't think they're going to fire him, but he might be kind of forced out. Like his days are behind him kind of makes the decision himself. I don't, think I'm the right man for the task anymore if the success doesn't pick up. Now, Notre Dame has a very talented roster this year, so I think it's kind of make or break almost. If he doesn't make the tournament, then what is he still doing? Yeah, I agree. Yep, I I would agree. I think they've done – I think he's a descend. I don't think they bring him back. I think – you're right. I think you're going to ask him, do you mind just (laughs) – let's let's call and get a – let's do a handshake on the table and let's walk out of here as friends kind of thing. Yeah. Um, But – yeah, I don't think he's going to – I think he's done a great job early on in his career. Um, I think he still gets great players in there. Um, I just don't know if he'll be great the next five years. So, I'll say decent. Yeah. Yeah. If- and I will say this too. Uh, this too. I think he's got a pretty good coaching tree. If I remember – not, I can't remember all the guys off the top of my head, but I think he has a pretty good coaching tree. And um, kind of like people think of with Duke or Roy Williams – I don't know if Roy Williams has, I mean, there's the, the guy from Cincinnati, but that's about it. So um, I think, I think Mike, the Notre Dame, Notre Dame will be fine. I think they got a very storied basketball program. Um, I just don't think he's going to be there another five years. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, I mean, for me, uh, so he's entering his 22nd year at Notre Dame. He has overall 448, 248 uh, overall record. You said how many, years? how many years he's been there? How many years? 22nd. I had he's been there for 22 years. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have that reaction. Yeah. Just like just like me with Leonard Hamilton's age, right? <laughs> yeah. So wow. Holy yeah. cow, I didn't know that. Yeah. So so again, so uh, but the last three seasons, he's been 14 and 19 overall, three and fifteen the ACC, 20 and 12, 10 and 10 the ACC, and then 11 and 15, 7 and 11 the ACC. So basically last three years, he hasn't had a winning record in the ACC yet, which, you know, so that's why I think for me, uh, you know, just like I think you were kind of saying, making eventually, I think soon, just like maybe like with the Jim Laranega over the last couple of years, you kind of see that handshake under the table and just kind of walk him out the door kind of thing. Not necessarily like a fire, but we kind of mutually agree to move on. Announce um, your retirement kind of thing. Yeah. Which, you know, yeah. Well, right, I mean, right out into the sunset. Well, I mean, thank he's, you very much. He's, he's, he's actually 62, so he's not overall that old. So, I mean, but, I mean, he could, like, you know, become like a, you know, like an assistant to the head coach kind of deal or, or you know, you know something like that. You know, I don't know. Go go somewhere. I don't think, I don't think it's going to happen because it's kind of like. Or like maybe like a, like a I, scout I, or something like that. Some, something like that. Yeah. 
I think of it kind of like if you're there, you're like Frank Beamer when he left Virginia Tech and they brought in um, Justin Fuente. Frank Beamer kind of was like, look, man, I'm just going to get out of here because I'll be a distraction otherwise. Yeah. I think if he's going to be, if he's going to, I think if a coach is going to do that, if he's a icon, like you say, I think he probably needs to just step away and let the guy, other coach do his thing. But maybe he does. Maybe he does. Maybe he does. Because I guess State did hire the uh, uh, Ruffin McNeil from ECU, but that was after three years or so of him being at Oklahoma. I'm, but I'm getting off track. Yeah. So. Yeah. But he also wasn't a uh, for, former state coach, but yeah. Um, True. Yeah, so now uh, moving on to uh, uh, Pitt uh, with Jeff Capel, and, and I actually am looking forward to to saying my point, but I'm going to let you go first, Dan. I don't think he lasts five more years, no. Yeah. I'm going to descend him. They're, basically, if you look at kind of the trend of a, a program, you know, they have like their year one under their head coach, they have their year two. This is going to be, what, Capel's fourth year? I think, so. I think third. maybe third. I think, I think he's going year. into his third, fourth year. Fourth yeah. year, okay. But his roster basically looks like he's in year one because he had yeah. his whole yeah his whole talent pool basically either transferred out or if you're Champagny, you went to the NBA and you probably it wasn't very attractive to return to Pittsburgh because of how bad their program state is right now. So just I think he gets like another chance to kind of build it up, but the fact that he build up his roster, but the fact that he didn't do it in his first three years and he's now back at year one, what what evidence is there for me to think that he now he gets a kind of a second go at it, he will now build a roster worth and a success, a pedigree worth keeping for more than five years. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I think I think he's gonna be um I think I think he's not going to be there in the five years. Personally, I think when you saw those transfers, you mentioned you mentioned the transfers happening, but do you remember when they happened? It was like a really yeah. random point in the season, and it was like two or three weeks away before the postseason. I think started. So, I I I think I think he's got some other stuff that something. I don't know if it's like a he, he seems a guy like who just I don't want to say runs his mouth a lot, but he like. Seems like he's more about voicing his frustrations during a game, and maybe he does have a coaching place he's drawing up. Um, I don't know if he's a good motivator, and I feel like he's probably got some. There's reasons why those players left, mm-hmm. put it that way. And if he's such a great coach, and he's got the Duke allure to him, why did they leave? So um, they were starters basically, and they left. So. Yeah. I think I don't think he's going to be there. I think there's something going on there, and um, yeah, yeah. Well, so for me, so so Jeff Capel. So believe it or not, when you know when Coach K was getting older, like you know, a couple, you know, like more of I would say a couple of years ago, you look at Jeff Capel as like the perfect replacement for for Coach K, just because he was around Coach K for so long and the Duke program for so long, and he does have uh, uh, experience being a head coach. Um, so you do kind of see him as kind of that, you know, possibly perfect replacement, but then obviously he went to Pitt. Um, the biggest thing, which I will say is actually, again, for those who don't know that he actually used to be a head coach at Oklahoma for five or six years. Uh, for, it was from 2006 to 2011. And, but the issue is that he didn't win any conference titles, but he did make it to the lead eight in 2009. But the problem is that he actually got fired because Oklahoma had the worst back-to-back basketball seasons in Oklahoma basketball history. And so for me, I always kind of have the, 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 the feeling that if you have a coach who has coached in a power five program and it didn't work out, unless there was a huge gap in terms of time wise between the two tenures, I wouldn't want to hire him again, just because if it does work now, why didn't it work then kind of deal? Like, you know, you just don't really see that, you know, unless it's that a long time that obviously, okay, he's had a chance to learn, had a chance to grow. Okay. Maybe we'll give him another chance, but I don't know. So, so that, that's kind of my shot, but again, that's why honestly for me, I mean, you know, I, when he went to pit, I said, okay, they're grooming him to be the head coach of Duke. They're going to be, they're like, Hey, Jeff, go coach a pit for a couple of years. And then we'll call you back. You know, when coach K retires kind of deal, you know, um, but obviously just, like so, you know his last his three years so far. He's he's had uh, fifteen ACC wins in three years. You know, it, it's kind of like okay, I don't really know how much longer this this issue is going to go. And just like you said, with the guys leaving in the middle of the year, it's just not a good look. So yeah, I mean for me, it's a decent as well. 
Um, all right. So now moving on to the legend Hall of Famer himself at Syracuse, Jim Beheim. Dan, what you got? Yeah, the next couple are going to be pretty short answers for me. Yeah. Because Jim Beheim, no, he's just just the fact that he's going to be past eighty at that point. So mm-hmm. I don't think he just coaches that long. Like he's obviously he's obviously going to go out retiring based on the, not like the same way that Roy Williams or Coach K did, but probably like a tier below in terms of his legacy. He's just. Yeah, there, there's no way he still coaches past eighty, though. Yeah, yeah. Making what you got personally. Personally, I think this is his last season. I think for two reasons, well, three reasons actually. Roy Williams, my chef's are gone, so mm-hmm. you can leave now. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you can. Um, so, but I think two. He is uh, how many wins is he away? He's eighteen wins away from a thousand wins. I think he wants to hit that mark mm-hmm. personally because he had the other two Hall of Fame coaches, but well, Roy Williams didn't, but or did he? I don't know. If he, I think I think I don't think he did. I know Mike Shashevsky did, um, and uh, I think he wants to hit that mark. And it's been with a very with a reasonable season, he could get eighteen wins. So I think he. I think it's part of it. He can retire as a thousand win head coach and Hall of Fame. It's one accolade he have. But I think also on a personal thing, he's coaching his son right now. And I, I don't think he's going to want to just quit while he's coaching his son. Yeah. So yeah. actually coaching I think, two of his sons. They got right. Jimmy, Jimmy Bayheim coming in. So Anybody, is he? I love that. So personally, I think he's going to retire soon. Five years from now, I think he's done. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I think the idea of I'm going to I'm getting to coach my sons, my sons. I got a chance, very easy chance to hit a thousand, which hardly no one does and the other two guys have left already i think he's yeah. got a, i think he's leaving well so the fun the funny thing to me which i'm kind of thinking about is obviously syracuse is all known too well across the country as being the zone team i mean they they i mean they are the master disaster it's like georgia tech and uh triple off well that's what i'm saying so like you know football. georgia tech is famous when they when they had the new coach coming in for the spring game they lined up in the wild or in the in the triple option offense, and then As they and then they audibled out. So I'm kind of like thinking, like, what if like for the first game, like in honor of Bayheim, they like the other team like lets them like get in zone, zone, and then they call man up, and they, they switch to man. Everybody's like, whoa, Syracuse running a man defense. That's crazy. Um, that would be funny. Yeah, that'd be good. You know, everybody would be every Syracuse man would be cheering and hollering because they love that. So. Oh yeah, um, but yeah, no. For me, I, I think because I mean, here's the thing. I mean, I I, I would say I mean this year with the team they have coming back. They, I mean, they're going to have a good team again this year, I think, in, in my opinion. And uh, so I, I definitely think getting 18 wins is, is doable. Getting that 1,000 wins would be a huge chip. And then, again, with with uh, Roy heading out and Coach K heading out, I just think he starts to see himself, you know, amongst all these young guys. And it's like, yeah, I just it's time for me to go. But also, too, one of the biggest, one of the biggest stats as well, which I'll say is so – he is a multiple time uh, Team USA assistant coach uh, beside Coach K. Won his national championship back in 2003. He actually has been to five Final Fours and 15 big, and has won 15 Big East titles. But since they joined the ACC, I think it was in the, the starting yeah. season was in 2013, he hasn't won any kind of ACC title. Um, so I think that's kind of, to me, you know, it's just one of those things. I'm not say, saying that like there's a, a decent per se, but it's just like, I just don't know if you're ever going to get really back to that point kind of deal. So, but again, for this, for the, I mean, he's one of those guys that, I mean, Syracuse, you're never going to get rid of him. He, if he wants to coach there until he's 99 years old, you're not going to get rid of him. I mean, because he's, I mean, he's Jim Beheim. you know, he is Syracuse, you know, you're not going to tell that guy to leave seriously. So yeah, but for me, I'm going to say decent. I, I just don't see him being around for too much. Longer. And, we, and we all know how much he just hates Greenville and their food, Greensboro and their food. Oh, get out of here with that. Oh my bad. gosh. Yeah. Like, like the, the ACC basketball championship should always be in Greensboro and then, and football should be at Charlotte and then baseball should be at Durham Bulls or, or Shaw Knights period, in my opinion, forever and ever. So that's not a North Carolina Homer thing. It's just Greensboro is tournament towns, what they call it. Yeah. If you put it anywhere else, doesn't make sense. You're, it's I 100 percent agree with you guys. I'm only biased because I live very close to uh, the city, New York City, and Brooklyn. So 
Yeah. Barkley Center, though, those are great times being able to go every year. But I oh, and I get that too. Yeah. From a holistic perspective, definitely. Yeah. I, I'll tell you one thing. I will say I can I can get on board somewhat with them taking it to DC because DC is still kind of in the middle. It's still within driving range for a lot of people. It's like saying, hey, we're going to host a tournament in Miami. Well, nobody can really go to Miami. Not From the people in the South, no one can really go up to Brooklyn. It's just, yeah, for, for, like, for fans like you, it's very convenient, and that's that's great. But your case. <laughs> yeah. Well, well but it, it can never get as dumb as when baseball went to Louisville for their championship. It was like nobody was at any of the baseball games, but then when Louisville played, it was sold out. And it's like <laughs> – Okay, you're not going to make any money if just Louisville, Louisville fans show up, okay? So, uh, the headquarters of the conference is here in North Carolina, too. So, right, right. Kind of, yeah. I don't know. So, side note there. So, yeah, now you, I know you kind of said, Dan, so Virginia, easy answer. Go for it. Yeah, I don't need to really say much besides yes, he yes. will be there. In- yes. <laughs> yeah. No easy answer. We're going to descend this guy. No, <laughs> 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 nah, he's. <laughs> Yeah. Tony Bennett is another guy I kind of think of in the same vein as Hubert Davis. Really good guy. No one, I mean, I know people who don't like him, um, but I think the majority of people do like him um, as a person. But I'm, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm the only one. Maybe that's a misguided thought. <laughs> I, but either way, either way, as terrible as it is. I want to like just gouge my eyes out watching Virginia play basketball. He's he's an icon as you use for Mike Bray. He's going to be there as long as he wants to be there. He won them a national championship. Yep. So he's well, he's going to be there for he's going, we're going to we're going to ascend that guy. Yeah. Well, and see the extend, reason why my extend, the reason extend, why my face changes is because I'm thinking in my head of of all the UNC fans that are going to clip making at the before and after he says. Tony Bennett in the same breath as Hubert Davis. And I was like, oh God. Like, you know, what are you saying there? So uh I'm but saying yeah, I mean, that uh they like personality. I'm not saying that oh, Hubert Davis is gonna be anywhere near as good. I hope his offense is as boring as, 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 Virginia's. as Virginia's. Yeah. Well, but this he here's the scary thing. The scary thing I, I will hold on add this. Carolina would run Hubert Davis out of Chapel Hill if he brought in an offense as slow as Tony Bennett. Because Carolina likes high pace offense. Yeah. That, that ain't going to cut it in North Carolina. Well, cause, cause, yeah, it's definitely a different type of vibe in Charlottesville. Like they they learn to embrace it. But hey, if you want to win, that's what we got to do. And Virginia says okay. Uh, yeah. But I mean, yeah, I mean UNC has like what if you get a hundred points, then Bojangles give them free biscuit or something like that. I don't know if Virginia's scored a hundred points and what if we score thirty points? Yeah, if we score thirty <laughs> points, hold the defense. On, if you hold the opposing team under fifty points, that'll be the equivalent. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that'd be that'd go. be right. But I mean, the scary part though is, is this guy is only fifty two. This guy's young. I mean, he's he's got a lot of time left. He's got a so lot. Of, we have another twenty thirty years. We could watch him do this to us. Yeah, I mean, and but again, I, I me me as a state fan, I love Tony Bennett. That guy's that guy's. I mean, he's he's just like you say, he's a great guy, and he does things right. And you know, at the end of the day, you know. I just hate when we play him, but I mean, I will yeah. add this too. State has had a lot of success playing Virginia lately. So just saying, no one, no one else has beaten Virginia back to back road trips at Virginia, mm-hmm. except NC State in a long time. Feather and Keats hat there. So, um, but yeah, no, easy X10, easy, easy. Uh, Virginia Tech, Mike Young, Dan, give it to us. This is also fairly easy. I'm going to say yes. I think Virginia Tech fans absolutely love the guy. It's basically polar opposites with their football coach in terms of how much they love the guy. And he's done great things. He has a great mid-major resume. He's built – I mean, people forget that they, that Virginia Tech was a very good program coming in with uh, what Buzz did. But then again, everybody transferred away. Kerry Blackshear is the most notable. So we kind of rebuilt the program up very fast. And he's doing a very good job at Virginia Tech. Mm-hmm. Now the um, Tyrese Radford situation that stinks, but I don't think that that's just a blip on the radar. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm going to say decent. Ooh, interesting. And my reasoning, because I I have a wife. My wife is a Hokie, um, and so I and I lived in Blacksburg, so I've made a few friends there now. Um, I personally think Virginia Tech fans. For basketball, not football, but basketball, 
are only very excited about basketball when basketball is good. And well, that's all fans, but yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but my thing is though, state like for state Carolina Duke, if you're going to love basketball, even if basketball is bad. They're, 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 they're like like Louisville, Kentucky. Those two schools are going to still love and care about their basketball, even when they're bad. They'll just be really unhappy. Yeah, <laughs> they'll be really unhappy. They'll be very mad and passionate about it. Yeah, I think Virginia, Virginia Tech's a little bit more indifferent to basketball. They couldn't really care. I think at times they can't. I mean, they do, um, but they're more. They're all about their football mostly. Um, my personal experience, having lived there, um, they and if they're good, they're good, they're good, and they're all in it. But if they're not, they're kind of like, okay, whatever. Back to whatever I was, else I was doing. I think Mike Young is still riding some of the coattails of Buzz Williams. That's my personal take. Um, I think he did well at Wofford. I never got that hire that they did when they hired him in the first place. Um, and I just don't, there's times I don't really see where they're going as a program with Mike Young, yeah. personally, like it's like you hired him, great. Do you really think he's the future? Kind of thing. Uh, um, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I pred- I'm predicting that in like the next two, three years, you're going to see some question marks start to arise around Virginia Tech. Like you mentioned, Tyrese Radford leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I just don't know if there's going to be a lot of buy-in yeah. with Mike Young. I don't know. He may fit the Virginia Tech vibe well, although I don't really know what that is with basketball because, again, they're all about football. Yeah. But I've also heard from some guys around the who are around the athletic department there. i got one friend of mine um, just told me, like, he just kind of like, yeah, Mike Young's kind of, you know, we're still kind of, Feeling them out in the deal. honeymoon phase a little bit, kind of thing. We're still trying to figure it out. Yeah, um, like he's good, um, but didn't they in the um, tournament only make an ace turn only make it to the final, the semifinals because one team got COVID? I think that's right. So, Dan, correct me, but basically, what what I remember for last year is that basically they. Basically, they won all of their easy games, but then whenever their hard games came around, they all of a sudden had a COVID breakout or something like that, and they couldn't play. Is that is that what? Year? This past year? Yeah, this past year. I They had a signature win against Villanova very early in the year. That's what it was. And then right. they, they beat UVA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, 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 will, I will say this. If they keep beating UVA, I'm going to tell you what, Virginia Tech hates Virginia. Yeah. yeah it's like, just like NC State hates Carolina and Duke. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. Yeah. Um, they view Virginia as the wine and cheese uppities, turn their nose up at everybody like we think of Carolina and Duke. So they, if he can beat Virginia, they're golden. Like he's golden. Like yep. you're great. Yep. But I'd really, they're, they're more indifferent to their basketball far and away compared to football. Yeah. Um, and I think it's in the, I think Virginia Tech's in the same kind of boat as we talked about with, um, more Miami, I think, and more um, – I won't say Florida State I think Leonard Hamilton has changed the dynamic there a little bit. But it's kind of in that ballpark. Um, I think he's still riding the coaches of Buzz Williams, who I thought was a great coach. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has a heck of a coach when he was there. I just don't see the future with Mike Young. Yeah, I didn't get a hire. Um, I know I'm talking longer than I have some other schools because I just got a personal connection to Virginia Tech. I, I just don't – I don't think in five years, I don't think they're going to extend him personally. That's just my bet. I think they're going to ride the contract out. And maybe see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, I think that, um, you know, a lot of Virginia Tech fans will kind of look at this past year and see, oh, we went nine four in the ACC. Wow. Like, you know, we did really good last season. And, you know, we were a number three seed. And, you know, wow. And, uh, you know, kind of that deal. But, you know, I mean, they, you know, first round, they lost to Carolina in pretty convincing fashion. And, uh, um, you know, and like overall, they you won five, 15 and 17 last season, um, but, you know, had a, a signature win against Villanova, which is nice. But, um, you know, before that, he when he was at Wofford, uh, the last year, he went 30 and five overall and 18 and 0 in conference, which is 
crazy to think about. I mean, undefeated in conference. So you kind of, you know, I think, I think Virginia tech needs to give him a chance. Um, you know, I think, you know, they need to let him build the program. He got thrown into a tough situation. Obviously they did not expect Buzz Williams to leave and go to Texas A&M. That was definitely a shocker, but, um, you know, I mean, not, not a huge shocker, but just, I mean, they weren't necessarily ready for it, but I think once you kind of heard the talking of Texas A&M, it was like, yeah, he's from there. That that's his dream job. He's probably gone. And so it, it stunk, but so I think you got to give him a chance a little bit. He's a young guy um that built up a great Watford program and you know we'll see what happens kind of deal um yeah so now let me add this to go ahead let me add this real quick I was going to say I remember I want to correct something the note I had about them getting into the semifinals they are their last few games of the regular season they got COVID Mm -hmm. and they or they chose not to play because another team got COVID right and so they kind of rode into the postseason as a three seed not yeah. playing like two or three games mm-hmm. and then just kind of slid in there and they lost yeah. so I just don't I'm just not buying Mike Young at Virginia Tech do I think he fits in there a little bit kind of but I think people are kind of trying to figure him out too there so we'll see how it goes so Dan finish us off Wake Forest Steve Young my man all right, Steve Forbes, I'm going to say, yeah, I think he's going to be there in five years. I, like, Wake Forest is kind of a program where, I mean, just think about their football program. They're, like, mediocre to above average consistently, and the fans are thrilled. Yeah. So I think all he has to do is do something similar for basketball, and I think Steve Forbes is a great coach. He There's a lot of stuff on him. So the players kind of like the fact that he's more of a freestyle five and five out kind of guy. He if you look at Steve Forbes, you really read into him. There was points at his East Tennessee State tenure, which was just the mid-major school he came from, that he thought he would overcoach the games, and East Tennessee State struggled. But the play, he recruits well because the players love to play for him. He's very freestyle. Like I said, he runs a five-out offense, and he did that the last couple of years at East Tennessee State, and they did very well. I think they won 30, 31 games in his last year. So I think that was – probably the best higher way could have gotten i'd say there's definitely more than a 50 percent chance he's there in five years yeah yeah and, grown grief and make it re- real quick but sorry yeah steve forbes i said steve young don't know why i said steve young steve <laughs> forbes go ahead bacon yeah steve forbes <laughs> he is um uh i think he's gonna be there for another um another five years after you know at the five years are gonna extend him as looked for record i think he's won like 74 percent of his games He's falls under the same coaching tree as the coach was at Wichita State, who was a you know was a really good coach. So he's had that that teaching there. Um, but I don't you know I honestly don't really I don't know a ton about him, um, and I didn't really know a ton about when they hired him either. Although I know he's been a coach much longer, um, and he's won the Southern Conference. He won Coach of the Year for regular season. Um, or he won the regular season and the uh, Southern Conference tournament in 2017 and 2020 at East Tennessee State. Um, I know he only went, uh, I think it was six and 16 at Wake Forest, but Wake Forest, we also know their their <laughs> their roster is garbage a lot of times, and <laughs> um, you know they. But the thing with Wake Forest is they could be back if Virginia Tech basketball can be really good again like it was with or really good i mean they were never good at hardly ever uh maybe they're and they got to be to the point where with buzz williams back they can do it at wake forest because wake forest has the history um so they just need the right coach and they they certainly got the money because they're a private school and they, they can pay those kind of things but i think he's um I I think he's going to be um give him a give him a couple years I think. Let him get his guys and he wants to get uh you know I know there's a guy that states recruiting who's from the Winston Salem area and I bet they're all over this guy but um you know I I think he's going to be um actually that they then they got they got a point guard from Raleigh I think his name's Carter Witt. He was a guy who was a really Big time player, and I think a guy like that. Give him. He was a true freshman last year, playing that came in a little bit late, I think, in the season for Wake Forest, and ended up doing pretty well. I think started a few games for him. I think Wake Forest is going to be a problem with him personally, and I think in the next two or three years, I think you're going to see Wake Forest 
where they've been in the bottom, I think you're going to see them being about the middle of the ACC, somewhere in that range. It could be more, could be less. Yeah. But I, I don't, I think that I personally, I think the days of Wake Forest being a crappy basketball school are about over. So I think, I think Steve Forbes is going to do a good job. He's got the pedigree. Um, he's got the experience and he's won where he's been at. Um, he, he's proven he can, re, he can recruit. He's already gotten some guys in already with a short amount of time he's had. I think just give him time. I think he's going to do good at Wake Forest. So I'm going to say extend. Well, so for me, yeah, I mean, it's a, extend as well. But the biggest thing I would say is it, it, if why I extend is because they gave Danny Manning seven years and he went 78 and one, 111 and he was 30 and 80 in the ACC. 30 and 80 in the ACC. So if you give that guy seven years, yeah, no. Steve Forbes will be here in five years, guaranteed. I mean, uh, unless Wake Forbes just went on some crazy tangent, but it's like, wait a second. Like, you know, what, what do you mean you're, we're letting him go? So, yeah, no, but I mean, yeah, last year he went six and 16, three and 15 ACC. But I mean, again, just like you said, Wake Forbes did, he didn't have much to work with, you know, f- didn't, ha- didn't have any fans last year due to COVID, but Wake Forest basketball didn't really have many fans show up at basketball games anyway. So it really, really wasn't much of a difference for him anyway. But yeah, I mean, it, it, what he did at East Tennessee, you know, his last year going 30 and four and then 16 and two in the, in, in conference, you know, got to give the guy time. And then, you know, definitely if I were him, I'd be calling Tim Duncan and Chris Paul every day, you know, until they show up, you know, and, and, you know, try and get some fans. Especially the after the like things, especially guys like that, like, Chris Paul is now in the Western Conference Finals. He, I mean, those those guys can carry a lot more class. Chris Paul is going to school at Winston Salem State, right? Which is kind of odd, yeah. But um, he's he's going to be right there occasionally. You get that guy around the program, Tim Duncan around the program. Mm-hmm. Um, those are two big yeah, guys. I, I, I personally think I think I think what Virginia Tech was the last few years with Buzz Williams and maybe recently with with uh, Mike Young. I think you're going to see Wake Forest get there very soon. Yeah. So, but on and a quick on a on a quick side note, uh, I am officially starting the Dave Clawson. Uh, why is he here? Train like you know, like there's a hype train, but then there's We're a why is he here train. Now? And why is Dave Clawson still in the ACC? We're switching I'm, sports now. <laughs> I, I, know, I know we're talking basketball here, but I just got to say, we're like, golly, man, why that guy is still here and hasn't got hired somewhere else. I have no idea. But anyway, so, so yeah, so, job security, man, <laughs> job security. I know Get paid. I know. Yeah. But again, just low, low pressure Who knows, but anyway, so, uh, so yeah, thanks Dan. So again, uh, you know, that's all, you know, the school. So, I, I, you know, thank you, Dan, for, for joining us, man. And, uh, appreciate, uh, all your help, man. So, uh, you know, for all those uh, fans as well, who if you guys haven't checked out ACC content, uh, make sure to go check them out. Uh, uh, Dan, uh, what, what's the best place for fans to go check you guys out at? I know you have a podcast. Uh, you can find them on Twitter. Uh, where else? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter. I do have an Instagram, but that I don't, I'm not really using that very much. If you find me on Twitter, I have basically everything attached to my bio. I have a podcast. I have a personal like link to I uh, write for Pipeline and there's a personal link to like all the articles that I wrote. So mm-hmm. I write stuff for all ACC in general. I write stuff for specific teams. So mm-hmm. just check me out at ACC content on Twitter. Yeah. We've, I was going to say to kind of I think he's had some good takes on things before, I like seeing his stuff on Twitter and reading it. So definitely go follow him guys. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, so thank you all again for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. Please make sure again, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. It really helps support the channel, supports us yep. and helps grow our our, uh, our following a little bit. Uh, please also to like this video if you enjoyed this. Uh, please check our other content if you haven't already. Our things that state fans never say, our other interviews, discussions, make sure to go check it out if you haven't already. And uh, also to make sure to follow us at Tuffy Talk Now on Twitter or Instagram. And, uh, and again, thank you as well to our sponsors at Flat Lens, Jessup uh, Insurance Group. Make sure to go check them out as well. All their information is in the video description below. So thank you all so much again. Please make sure to stay safe. And as always, go Pack. <laughs>